Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to Path of the Prophets. So here we are at the Great Pyramids in Giza, Giza. And I'm looking out toward Cairo right now. It's quite lovely out there in the distance. So if you notice at the, at the top of the pyramid, um, you can still see a bit of, of remaining of, of the remaining outer um, outer layering of the pyramids. I'd heard that it, that originally it was it was white, and that materials were taken away to be used in uh, in uh, various building structures. I'd heard that a number of the masajid in from the Fatimid era in in Cairo were built with materials from from the pyramids here as well as other local temples and very ancient Christian churches and uh, Jewish houses of worship. If you could confirm this in the comments that would be appreciated because um, I'm seeking to understand this. Um, I know that when I was when I was traveling around India I went to the Qutb Minar in, in the Delhi area, which is one of the most impressive structures I've ever seen. It's beautiful. It reminds me of a giant cactus. And it's it's very, very beautiful. And it's surrounded by, you know, like the by the the, the buildings around it, I believe a madrasa, maybe a masjid, are clearly built with materials and columns from Jain temples and maybe Vaishnavite, I don't know, maybe Shaivite as well, temples. So it's kind of interesting that it incorporated all these materials. So these were clearly like, so temple structures were demolished, tore down, and then uh, the materials repurposed and reused. Um, in that instance, what they would do is when there were images of, of humans and animals, they would either turn the columns upside down or deface them. And we see this happen around the world. Now I know that, that uh, Christians have in some cases taken over ancient sites and used old materials from, from the Greeks and the Romans and, and prior civilizations. So this is something that humans do in general. It may have happened in, uh, in China, with because I know that there were periods of persecution of Taoists and Buddhists. And, uh, you know, it's always, it's, it's usually, my understanding is, oftentimes, rulers, when they go in debt, they will... Um, they have advisors from certain religions and maybe one is out of favor or a tradition has a lot of wealth. And so maybe, maybe a lot of money is being deposited in various temples and uh, you know gold layered on statues and around areas of the temple. And so it's very convenient to persecute a particular religion in order to get rich quickly. And we can see this happen many times through history and where, uh, where there will be an excuse to persecute a tradition and then go and take their wealth um, and to humiliate a people. Um, some, in some cases, I know like in Southeast Asia, the bomber people from, uh, that came down from Tibet and were ruling in what is now Myanmar in Burma, my understanding is that they would go into the Mon territories and they would they would uh, raid the temples and they took the you know from from you know Thailand and Burma the areas they were conquering they would take the wealth of the temple they would take the key statuary they would take the Tipitaka the scriptural traditions they would take key monks that, that knew the Tipitaka so that they could teach the their people and they would take you know martial artists and dancers and traditions martial arts traditions and and then incorporate them into their own I'm not trying to pick on on the bomber people on the Burmese people but just to say that this is a worldwide where people will reappropriate and recycle earlier traditions, building materials, and then they would destroy temples. Like I believe the bomber, they, they built the giant uh, Bagan temples, uh, uh, which are very, very beautiful. And I don't know the extent that they used repurposed or recycled materials, but it's also, you know, oftentimes temples and masjids and, and, and churches will be built, built by rulers who have done tremendous sin and they feel guilty about it and they want to get into heaven free card. And so they will go and they will engage in a big building project or that they have betrayed the people to such an extent that they want to curry some favor, favor and establish some trust. And also they'll share out wealth uh, in a way 
way to, 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 to keep a certain group close and, and also to uh, kind of separate one group from another. So it's interesting, like, so when, if you're looking at, say there was a, a long gone society, a civilization from ancient times, not everybody values um, historical artifacts and heritage across time um, the way that many of us postmodern and modern people do. Um, and so if there are no people in the area, nobody's using the old temple materials, and you don't have the technology to quarry the materials and design them on the same level, then I can see where some people might do that. But the, the issue then is one of respect. Are we showing respect to those previous peoples? Are we honoring them? Are we, are we showing them in a, in a dignified manner? Or are we desecrating what they did? Are we disrespecting it, defacing it, vandalizing it, misusing it? And also, if there are living descendants of those people, are we humiliating the descendants of those ancient peoples? Are we disrespecting them? Is this a form of theft? Is it murder of a legacy? Is it murder of a heritage? Um, is it theft? You know, so is it, like so we need to think about these things very carefully. Like within the Islamic tradition, we have what I see is we, we have an ethical tradition that is not as of yet perfectly synthesized. It's in seed form. It has tremendous potential and can be simplified and made accessible to all humanity very, very quickly, but it would require um, a collaborative project and an egoless project. So we have to overcome our nefs individually and collectively, and we have to give up all forms of idolatry, all uh, unhealthy devotion to falsified conceptualizations and attachments to... Uh, d How, let me restate that. So we need to give up all forms of idolatry, which I would define as unhealthy and devoted attachment to false conceptualizations of people, places, things, and ideas. So idolatry is much deeper and more pervasive than people have imagined. And there are other ways of rereading our tradition that are beautiful and powerful and that are uplifting and motivating and will inspire not just the Muslimin. If, 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 you know, we'll discuss this in another video, but what I wanted to say is that we have, we have this beautiful site, this powerful site, and materials have been um, repurposed and, and reappropriated for other uses. And I'm not sure that they, like I haven't looked too deeply into how respectfully it was done. Is it to establish continuity between the ancient people and the people that came after? Is it to show a living link? Is it to show respect? Is it honored in some manner? Because I would argue that because of the 124,000 prophets and other, we, other known prophetic connections, there were prophetic, strong prophetic traditions in ancient Egypt going all the way back. And perhaps we've been lied to by some of the, the modern and postmodern scholars of hieroglyphics and archaeology in order to hide certain materials and then appropriate things for occultic purposes. Um, so anyway, we need to consider these things because we need, we need to be very honest and just in how we assess data. We have been lied to and deceived about so much, so it's time for us to see things clearly, inshallah. Until next time, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.